Good morning, everybody. Mr. Sharpstein coming at you right now. Uh, we have an energy forms and, and changes lab that I've uh, written out for you that I want you to try and go through. We're going to have a short open note quiz on energy and energy transformation soon involving LOL charts and such, and you, you're going to observe something, kind of break down what you see. But for right now, I want you to go through the process of looking at some energy transformations and take down a little bit of information and try and determine how the energy form uh, energy forms are changing place or taking place. So I want to begin with the intro activity. I have two different materials right here, iron and brick. I have ways of heating them up and cooling them down. And I have some water and oil. I also have a way of keeping track of the energy in the situation, either by clicking energy cubes. Notice when I do that, the olive oil has some energy cubes, the water has a lot more, the brick has some, and the iron has more than the brick. We can also keep track of the temperature of different things by putting thermometers on them. And let's see here. There we go. So this is about room temperature. If I take the brick and I put it on here and I increase the heat, notice what happens to the energy inside it. I'm adding energy. If I put a little bit of heat on there, I don't add energy nearly as fast. I still add it. And if I have a whole lot of flame, the energy gets added faster. We'll let the, uh, the heat energy increase. Notice those cubes don't stay in the brick. Some of them are leaving. There we go. It's nice and hot. And we're going to take it put it in the water. What do you think will happen? If you thought that perhaps some of those energy cubes would be leaving the brick and going to the water, you're absolutely correct. Let's add some more heat energy here. And throw the brick back in the water. Let's see what happens to the water. That's creating steam. You may remember when we were heating up that brass ball at the beginning of the year, and we put it in the water, the water steamed like crazy because we're passing energy from one material to another. I can also take energy away from the brick by throwing a whole lot of ice there. I'm losing all those cubes. And now I have that hot water. Now the brick has stolen some of the energy cubes. And I can decrease the temperature of the water. And you can play around with the uh, iron and do the exact same thing. And see what it would uh, do to the olive oil, which one behaves, you know, which one will lose energy the easiest. That's, you know, just to play around. Get, out, get used to the idea that we're representing energy here as these little cubes that can be added or taken away. Now, in particular, what kind of energy are we looking at? We're looking at um, heat energy. So we're keeping track of the thermometer. Now, that's not the entire lab. Your lab is actually going to be about this energy systems piece. All right, we have a system right here. We have a water faucet. We have a wheel. We have some water right here. Let's make it simple. Let's put on a, a fan. That's a nice, easy transformation to understand. I'm going to click on the energy symbols. Notice there are five different kinds of energy represented here. Not every single kind of energy that's possible. We've talked about forms of energy that you don't see on here, like kinetic and potential. I don't see those on there. Um, but other forms of energy are. And each one of these can have their own kind of kinetic potential. Now, if I were to turn on the water, the water will fall and hit the wheel. The wheel's got a generator attached to it, so as the wheel spins, well, let's, let's watch. We have silver ease falling. That would be mechanical energy. That mechanical energy is passed onto the wheel, turning the wheel. The wheel spins the generator and makes electrical energy. And then that electrical energy goes back to the silver, and that's mechanical. So we have two energy transformations going on here. All right, based on the system, if we decrease the flow of the water, there's fewer energy cubes to fall, there's less electricity, and the fan slows down and sends off more, or sorry, less mechanical energy. You can play around with lots of different things, and you're going to have to, so we turn off the water. Uh, let's change it up. Let's do the sun. The sun is shooting out all kinds of energy. I go to the energy cubes, you can see the rays, but... The sun is shooting off all kinds of energy. That energy is not being used by our system at all. So we're going to have to get rid of this wheel. Maybe we'll pop in a solar panel instead. And you're seeing an energy transformation. So we have light energy going to electrical, going to mechanical. What happens if it's a day like, well, this morning? We have some clouds out there. 
lots of clouds, make it hard to run. Maybe if we just have a few clouds. With a few clouds, we can still get some energy going on. All right, so we have a little water, we have a little sun, we pop some steam in. Hmm, we're generating steam, but the solar panel is not able to do anything with that. Let's put the wheel back in. Gather that energy up, and again, we can transfer it to something different, whether it's a fluorescent light or a fan like we had. Get that light to glow. An incandescent light, which are, you know, there's fewer and fewer of those around. So if you're not familiar with that one, you heat up a wire to the wire glows. Or we can put in water. There's also two ways to gather energy and watch the energy transform. Keep in mind, we can keep track of the temperature with a thermometer. Even though there's no numbers, you can give me a, an estimation of hot or cold. But more importantly, we can watch what kind of energy is taken from one kind of transform to another using this color-coded chart right here for the energy symbols. What I would like you to do is once you've played around with the intro and the systems a little bit, you are going to go through and carry out this lab. All right? It walks you through, but of course, anytime there are questions, you can send me a comment, send me an email, ask me to set up a Google meeting, or maybe I'll just send up a Google, Google meeting just in case. And if you have trouble with this, you just show up and I can work through it with you. You don't have to necessarily ask questions. We'll just start in one place and say, all right, let's work through. What I would like you to do is go through, carry out the lab, answer the questions. In some cases, I just give you, you know, directions of what to do and you specify uh, if the faucet's on high, what's happening to the electrical energy generated. Is there a lot or is there a little? I'm not good asking for a number. I'm asking for a lot or a little based on what you see happening and how many little energy boxes there are. In some cases, I show you the scenario I want you to set up, and then I ask you to carry things out. All right, so conduct the experiments. Ask me any questions if you have, if you need, and uh, show up to the Google meeting if you have questions that you just can't answer on your own or you just are unsure of how to carry this out. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be seeing you.